Leatherback turtle nesting populations in the North Atlantic are undergoing dramatic and widespread declines at a rate of 4% per year. This reflects an overall global trend of leatherback decline in all ocean basins. The highest number of leatherback nests in the United States occur in Puerto Rico. Research scientists from the Anderson Cabot Center for Ocean Life at the New England Aquarium are partnering with community-led sea turtle conservation groups using satellite tag technology to collect data on female leatherback turtles nesting in Puerto Rico. These tagging and monitoring efforts are crucial to identify opportunities to protect leatherbacks across the Caribbean during the breeding and nesting season and throughout the Northwest Atlantic during migration and feeding. Leatherback sea turtles are considered a critical endangered species. Puerto Rico is still one of the strongholds where we have not seen that dramatic decline from all the areas of the Caribbean, especially the islands of the Caribbean. We have a, a, a large amount of nest numbers, which means a lot of individual leatherbacks that are laying here. Uh, the reasons that uh, it's probably because of our management actions and also because of our conservation efforts at least on the beaches, that's the area that we can control. So from all the places in the Caribbean, Puerto Rico is one of the strongholds where we still have seen uh, our populations are stable or in, even in some areas increasing. The leatherback turtles face numerous threats throughout their life cycle. So as little tiny hatchlings coming off the beach, um, some of the threats they face are just being gobbled up by lots of predators. They're very small and tasty. And as they grow larger, they have fewer in-water threats, um, natural predators. So big sharks, maybe orcas will go after leatherbacks. Um, really their main threat on the beach and in the water is um, people. Our activities really impact these turtles. Fishing gear is probably the number one source of both bycatch, incidental injury, and mortality for leatherback turtles worldwide. And second to fisheries, I would say, is development of their nesting beaches. They're losing habitat, both to hotel developments, but also things like climate change, where they're actually losing beach because of sea level rise and increased intense storm surge and things like that. Tag data is really important. Puerto Rico just hasn't had many projects studying these turtles beyond the beach. So there's amazing work being done on the beaches in Puerto Rico to count the number of nests, to look at the hatch success, so basically how many turtles in each nest survive. All of that is being done by multiple groups and there's really good data. But once the turtles create the nest and leave the beach, there's no data. So that's where the tags come in. So we're able to actually collect data on these turtles when they're not on the beach. When they're between nests, with leatherbacks can be anywhere from eight to 13 days between nests. They're swimming around somewhere and we don't know where. So it's really important to know where they are because there could be potential fisheries or other threats in those areas impacting these turtles in between their nests. And so we want to collect that information so we understand not just which habitats are critical for beaches, but also which habitats are critical along the coastline. Our tag data in Puerto Rico is really exciting because it's all new. We're learning where leatherbacks go um, in each of these areas between their nests. We're learning how many nests they lay in a given season, which is critically important. The other thing we're learning is, are they all coming back to their same beach for each nest, or are they actually dispersing their nests more widely? Are they nesting in areas that are not monitored so that they're not being intercepted, nobody knows they're nesting there? Um, these are the, some of the questions we, we had initially. And we are learning a lot. So we started in Southeast Puerto Rico and those turtles actually turn out to be really loyal to Southeast Puerto Rico. I mean, they certainly could be nesting anywhere on the island. It would be very easy for a leatherback to circumnavigate the entire island of Puerto Rico in just a day or two, but they're not. They're coming back very loyally to their own beach. So that's really interesting information. I really love working on the nesting beaches because you do get a little more time to actually observe the turtle. So observation is a critical piece of understanding animal behavior. So when I go to the nesting beaches, I actually get to sit and watch them go through this ancient process and ritual of digging up these nests, which they've been doing for over 100 million years. It's a little bit like looking into the past, actually, when you see a leatherback going through its nesting process. It never really loses its magic, I guess. You always feel a little bit of awe that these turtles are able to find their way back after migrating so far throughout the entire Northwest Atlantic. I mean, this turtle that's nesting in front of you could have been coming all the way from Newfoundland previous feeding season. It's, it's quite remarkable to think about and yet they're able to pinpoint that exact beach where they were probably born. It's amazing. <laughs>